What did Robert Kiyosaki say in Rich Dad and Poor Dad? You know, if you're in Vietnam and want to know about business, actually, if you're anywhere and want to know about business, you might want to check out Tom Peng. He, uh, he doesn't fuck around. Yeah, Tom Peng. He's A-OK. -okay. Peace. So, well, first of all, I'm actually a guest at uh, someone's house. So apologies for any noises that you hear in the background. Like I said, I try to make time for these videos and I'm trying to do them everywhere I go, right? I've been doing them at the Alibaba's office. I've been doing it in my own office. I've been doing it at my own homes. And I really need to like find time to make these videos for you. And today I'm going to answer a question from one of my fans. So one of my fans, uh, Wei Wing Tan, he said, when I read the rich dad, poor dad, I don't understand about don't work for money, let the money work for you. So he wanted me to explain exactly what is Robert Kiyosaki saying? I actually know a lot about what Robert Kiyosaki says because I actually studied his work. Uh, I'm not going to go very deep into what he is preaching. I'm going to talk about two ideas that he tries to convey to his fans, right? Uh, Robert really is in the business of selling courses and seminars, right? So he wants you to go invest in real estate. All right, nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that, but just we have to be very transparent about it. So he has a narrative that he tells people and the goal for him is to sell courses and seminars to make money. And trust me, Robert is a very rich man by doing that, right? So, but there are two ideas that Robert says and I agree with, and I will share with you today. One is that money is a depreciating commodity, right? Money is always losing its value, right? Just think about 10 years ago, right? 20K dong, what can you get with 20K dong, right? Think about today, what can you get with 20K dong or 100K dong, right? So you, you can probably tell that, you know, you can get less with the same amount of money. It is the same in Canada, right? For example, a house in Canada 20 years ago, average value is probably around $250,000. Today, if you don't have $2 million, you can't buy a house in Vancouver, the same house. This does not mean that the value of the real estate is actually going up. What this actually means is that, you know, the value of money is going down. So a lot of people think that buying a house is a good investment. Not necessarily so, because maybe you paid $250,000 for a house and 10 years later you can sell it for $2 million, but you still need $2 million to buy that house back. So, you know, you didn't really gain anything. It's just that the value of the house went up to $2 million. Uh, it's the same for any other commodity. A Mercedes-Benz S-Class back in... Uh, 10 years ago, right, would be like $100,000, right? Uh, today, it's probably like close to $200,000. It's the same car, the same class, but now you have to pay more to get it. It's not because the car got more expensive, it's because the value of money is always depreciating. And I can go into deep reasons why that is happening, but in short, because countries, US, Vietnam, they all print money. They print money to fund their governments. So by doing so, uh, you know, there's more and more, you know, money in the market. So when there's more of anything, the value goes down, right? That is the very simple explanation why money is depreciating. So don't get fooled into thinking that by buying a real estate that you're actually making a good investment. It's not always the case. And in fact, Tom would never advise you to buy real estate. Right. But Robert would. Robert is in the real estate business and he would say that, you know, buy real estate not to make money, but to hedge against the depreciating value of money. Right. Because if money is going down, you buy real estate, you keep the value. That is what he's talking about. So number two, uh, very important 
concept I want to convey to you is that, according to Robert, right, the idea of asset and liability is very different from the traditional accounting idea of asset and liability. So when you buy a house, everybody thinks you got an asset. Right? The house is an asset, but according to Robert, it's not the case. If you buy a house to live inside the house yourself, that house is actually a liability because you don't make any money from it, right? And in fact, you have to pay water, you have to pay electricity, you have to pay maintenance, you have to fix this, you have to fix that. It's actually a liability. You're losing money by owning that house, right? So you cannot count that as a asset. It's a liability. A car is a liability because, yes, it does help you, you know, make it make your life more convenient, but you know. You're paying money. You're paying gas. You're paying insurance. You get in an accident.、Uh, you know the car breaks down. It all takes money to maintain that car. It, the car doesn't actually generate any income for you. So that is a liability, right? According to Robert, an asset is something that will generate cash flow for you. It will put money into your pocket. So Robert wants you to correctly categorize what is asset, what's liability, and he wants you. To buy things that are assets and not liability, he does not want you to buy cars or houses that、um, you know will cost you money in the long run. He wants you to buy things that will help you make money, right? So if you buy a house or you buy an apartment and you rent it out, and there's cash flow, there's money coming in, that is considered an asset because every month it's generating income for you, right? That is an asset. So very two important concepts. From Robert, right? One is money is always depreciating, so don't keep the money in the bank. Put it somewhere else to hedge the depreciation of money. And two is that you always put money into an asset, so that it's generating more money for you. Don't use money to buy liabilities because you'll always lose money with those. So if you do just that, you will see your money continually to accumulate. You will continue to get more and more of it because the power. Of cash flow, right? As long as you have a steady cash flow, it's gonna help you build wealth.、Um, take fucking action and、uh, don't be a fucktard.